I've had a couple requests recently to do a mixing tutorial on Dialog in Adobe Audition using only stock plugins. And I totally get that because not everybody has third party plugins or access to those types of tools. So Dialog mixing in Audition with stock plugins. <laughs> Here we are in Audition. You can see the recording here was a little hot. Some of these peaks are hitting, you know, right above, right at zero, which was definitely a whoops, but I think we can work around that. This was a live event recording type of situation. So let's just listen, just a chunk here of what we're, what we're working with. We've been honest with ourselves. These are the areas that I need to change and I'm committed to change. Now the question is, how are we gonna make that change? Here Okay, so it's a high quality recording. We don't have any buzz or problems with, with that. So we'll start off with compression. So come in here to a stock plugin. Let's go look at the single band compressor. So you know how compressors work. I've talked about this before. The threshold is the point at which it will kick in. So you bring that down from zero into the negatives and say you take a negative 10 threshold, then anytime your audio goes across the negative 10 threshold, the compressor will become active. So threshold is important. You got to look at where your levels are. Ratio is how hard you're going to compress. I'll just say a good ratio for dialogue I like to use is four to one. So it compresses the signal at a four to one ratio. Attack and release we'll talk about and then uh, makeup gain at the bottom here. So let's just listen through and set a four to one ratio. We'll just type that in and then set our threshold based on where we're seeing our peaks Here's at. Here's how I did it. I began every morning. This is how I began every morning in my day. Before I went to work, I'd get up at 5 a.m., 5.30, I was at the gym by 6 o'clock. So what I just did there was I, you could hear the distortion when I brought the threshold way down. That's because this isn't a high quality plugin. It's a stock plugin. So you can't push these things too hard like you could if you bought a nicer one. But it was really having a problem because the attack was so fast and the release was so fast. So I made the attack and release a little slower. The attack means how quickly it engages when you cross the threshold. The release is how quickly it lets it go back to the normal levels after it comes back down under the threshold. The other thing I did when I was working out was I'd always go through my goals, okay? So maybe I'm on the, the stationary bike. I'm on the stationary bike, I'm riding the bike, I'm maybe listening to some music. So the easiest way to tell that your compressor is being engaged without some sort of metering system to see in real time is the volume is coming down when I go on and off for that. So we're gonna set that one just right where it is. It's kind of a hard compressor, but I think this works for this particular application. And all I'm gonna do now is just double it do a second single band compressor with very similar settings, you know, take it down to maybe like negative, a little bit harder of a threshold, but the ratio is still four to one and very similar settings in attack and release and see how that sounds. That I'm anchoring to and at the same time I'm going through my goals. Okay, so we all need to have goals. Now the challenge, some people say, well, I don't have goals. Okay, they say that less than 3% of the world. Okay, so next I would go to an equalization here. So we got a couple equalizer options here. There's a parametric EQ. Um, there is a just a graphic EQ. And if you do a 30 band graphic EQ, basically you're looking at the EQ spectrum from left to right, and you can just pull down based on these uh, set frequencies. And there's not a lot of wiggle room in something like this. It's pretty scientific, if that makes any sense. So I'm gonna go to the parametric EQ here. And so the, the hardest part about stock plugins usually is that you can't see what you're working with as you're working with them. But in Audition, this parametric EQ actually does give you an EQ spectrum here. So you can actually see what's going on and then make your adjustments. So let's just look here at the stock plugin for the parametric EQ. So I'm going to do a low cut roll off here where I'm just rolling off the low frequencies. And then always I kind of notch down here in the muddy frequencies between 200 and about 800 to 1000 hertz is where you get a lot of the muddiness. And uh, you can make the Q width a little wider or narrower based on your goals here. I'm going to make it a little wider. Remember the Q is how wide of a frequency band you're going to be pulling down. So the wider, the more bands you'll pull down, the more narrower is the more notching, the more uh, uh, narrow bands that you'll be able to pull down. I'm riding the bike. I'm maybe listening to some music that I'm anchoring to and at the same time. Then we'll go up here on the high end. We'll give it a little bit of air. We'll just lift that up three or four decibels, probably at about 15,000 Hertz. I'm, I'm going through my goals. Okay. So we all need to have goals. Now the challenge, some people say, well, I don't have goals. Okay. They now let's do before and after see where we're at. Say that less than 3% of the world's population have written goals with plans to attain them on paper, less than 3%. 
Okay, so that's sounding pretty good. We remove some of that low muddiness, add a little air on top. One of the interesting things that happens when you compress dialogue is it tends to make the sibilant frequencies pop out. Those are the, the frequencies at the top of the spectrum, usually between five and 10,000 hertz. They come from our S's and our T's and our F's. F, S, T, that's called sibilance, sibilant frequencies. So what we do is we use a specific type of compression called a de -esser. So the stock de is right here under amplitude and compression. Grab the de pull that thing up. Let's look at our uh, settings here. So center frequency, 5,000 hertz. The bandwidth is 3,000 hertz. That just means how wide, kind of like Q. Uh, and then you set your threshold here based on where it's going to kick in. So since he's a man, uh, male vocals tend to be between five and 8,000. I might bump this up to six uh, and I'll set this bandwidth to be just a little bit wider and we'll see how this threshold is acting. Okay, so you don't want to be in that group. You want to be in the other group that has the written goals. What I would do is, so you hear how extreme that is? It almost sounds like you're losing the high end because this threshold is so intense, it's cutting off anything in the sibilant area. Let's pull this up to about negative 20 and see how that sounds. I'd have those goals in front of me, my top three to five goals. So that's nothing, so we'll pull it down. And I would rehearse and read those every day. I'm on the stationary bike, I'm riding the bike, I'm maybe listening to some music that I'm anchoring to, and at the same time, I'm going through my goals. Okay, so I'm kind of liking that. That's starting to sound like it's pulling down the S's and T's and F's without destroying the top end. So at this point, you've got some pretty good dialogue, and now all you want to do is, is one of two things. You can either do the limiting here, where you bring your levels up <clears throat> and make sure it's going to cut it off at a certain threshold at the top, or you could do more compression. And in this case, you could use a multi-band compressor, which compresses on four EQ bands, and it kind of acts like a dynamics processor and an EQ processor. I don't know if that makes any sense. I rarely use those. So we're just going to skip that and go right to limiting. So we're going to go back into amplitude here. Go find a hard limiter. Maximum amplitude. This piece right here is, is where no audio is going to cross. I like to set this at negative 0.6 usually. I don't like anything bleeding over 0.6. Why? I don't know. Input boost. This is how much you want your... Yeah, this is a little different. Usually the language here is threshold and you pull that backwards. Input boost here is the same idea, it's just flipped. So we're boosting instead of setting a threshold to boost. So let's give it about six decibels of gain and see how this sounds. Okay, so we all need to have goals. Now the challenge, some people say, well, I don't have goals. Okay, they say that less than 3% of the world's population have written goals with plans to attain them on paper, less than 3%. Okay, so that's really putting it up in the high range like you want, good amplitude, so it's going to stand out from your mix. And you, you can adjust those levels just gently when you get back into Premiere. Once you have it where you like it, go ahead and apply that effects rack. All that does is it bakes it into the actual file so you don't have to worry about these plugins sitting on the channel strip. They're going to just be in there. Now it's a part of the audio file when it goes back into Premiere. But now what I want to do is save this as a different file, and then I'm going to pull up the original file back into Premiere. Whoops. That's not what I want to happen. Okay, here's the original file, just the waveform right here. Here is the new processed one. So immediately you can see there's been an amplitude adjustment and there's been some compression, making this a little bit more even of a signal. But to do an apples to apples comparison, I'm gonna put a limiter on the unprocessed just so we can get them at the same amplitude or at least roughly the same so we don't have to worry about that when we're listening to the different effects applied. So here is the original unprocessed. Instead of worrying about the bills and being afraid of the bills like I used to be, and here's the processed. Was it instead of worrying about the bills and being afraid of the bills, like when I got a bill in, I'd hide it inside my desk drawer and hope it just went away, right? Well, it's not going anyway, right? Like I used to be, when I got a bill in, I'd hide it inside my desk drawer and hope it just went away, right? Well, it's not going anyway, right? So that is it. That's, that's mixing with stock plugins in Adobe Audition. I mean, it's pretty simple once you get a hang of things and once you learn about those different thresholds and ratios, the importance of compression, EQ to clean things up, and limiting to boost your signals at the end. Those bare bones can take you a long way if, you don't, if you're new to audio or if you don't really understand how to do audio. Hopefully that helps. Let me know if it didn't. Be sure and hit like so this video can spread around to people in need. You're doing a good service to people, to video people everywhere. Also hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, be sure and follow me on Twitter at Oliver J. Hughes. I want to do more interacting over there as far as ideas for this and conversations around video and audio production. Otherwise, I'll see you next week. <laughs>